I am convinced that there is no simple formula or technique that would immediately allow you to master the ability to be guided by the voice of the Spirit. Our Father expects you to learn how to obtain that divine help by exercising faith in Him and His Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Were you to receive inspired guidance just for the asking, you'd become weak and ever more dependent on them. They know that essential personal growth will come as you struggle to learn how to be led by the Spirit, what may appear initially to be a daunting task will be much easier to manage over time if you consistently strive to recognize and follow the feelings prompted by the Spirit. Your confidence in the direction you receive from the Holy Ghost will also become stronger. I witness that as you gain experience and success in being guided by the Spirit, your confidence in the impressions you feel can become more certain than your dependence on what you see or hear. I believe that you can leave the most precious personal direction of the Spirit unheard because you do not respond and apply the first promptings that come to you. Impressions of the Spirit can come and respond to urgent prayer or unsolicited when needed. Sometimes the Lord reveals truth to you when you're not actively seeking it, such as when you're in danger and do not know it. However, the Lord will not force you to learn. You must exercise your agency to authorize the Spirit to teach you. As you make this a practice in your life, you'll be more perceptive to the feelings that come with spiritual guidance. And when that guidance comes, sometimes when you least expect it, you'll recognize it more easily. Inspiring influence of the Holy Spirit can be overcome or masked by strong emotions such as anger, hate, passion, fear, or pride. When such influence are present, it's like trying to savor the delicate flavor of a grape while eating a jalapeno pepper. Both flavors are present, but one completely overpowers the other. In like manner, strong emotions overcome the delicate promptings of the Holy Spirit. Have patience as you're perfecting your ability to be led by the Spirit careful practice to the application of correct principles and being sensitive to the feelings that come, you will gain spiritual guidance. I bear witness that the Lord through the Holy Ghost can speak to your mind and heart. Sometimes the impressions are just general feelings. Sometimes the direction comes so clearly and so unmistakably that it can be written down like spiritual dictation. I bear solemn witness that as you pray with all the fervor of your soul, with humility and gratitude, you can learn to be consistently guided by the Holy Spirit in all aspects of your life. I have con Firm the truthfulness of that principle in the crucible of my own life. I testify that you can personally learn to master the principles of being guided by the Spirit. That way, the Savior can guide you to resolve the challenges of life and enjoy great peace and happiness. As a young regional representative, I was assigned to assist Elder Marion G. Romney in reorganizing the stake. During the long, quiet ride to the conference, our conversation turned to the spiritual dimensions of our assignment. Elder Romney taught me about how the Lord blesses us with revelation. Robert, he said, 
I have learned that when we are on the Lord's errand, we have His blessings to accomplish whatever we're asked to do. Elder Romney further explained that we would arrive in a distant city, kneel in prayer, interview priesthood holders, kneel in prayer again, and the Holy Ghost would reveal to us the person whom the Lord had chosen to be the new stake president. He promised me it would be one of the great spiritual experiences of my life, and it was. You may ask, how do we seek personal revelation? Paul counseled the saints to rely on the Spirit rather than the wisdom of the world. To obtain that Spirit, we begin with prayer. I have learned that prayer provides a firm foundation for personal revelation, but more is required. Revelation comes on the Lord's timetable, which often means we must move forward in faith, even though we haven't received all the answers we desire. As faithful children, youth, parents, teachers, and leaders, we may receive personal revelation more frequently than we realize. The more we receive and acknowledge personal revelation, the more our testimonies grow. Our responsibility is to seek personal revelation for ourselves and for the responsibility the Lord has given us. We prepare to receive personal revelation, as the prophets do, by studying the scriptures, fasting, praying, and building faith. Faith is the key. I call upon each of us to seek more and receive more of the Spirit of God. The Savior prayed that His disciples in the New World would receive that Spirit. Then, as an example to all of us, He departed from His disciples and in prayer thanked His Heavenly Father for bestowing it. Let us follow His example, pray for the Spirit of God, giving thanks for the marvelous blessings in our lives. Serious consequences result whenever we miss important messages, especially if these messages come from God. So how do we recognize inspiration when it comes? Ina stated, while I was thus struggling with the Spirit, behold, the voice of the Lord came into my mind. The voice of the Spirit of Revelation is not necessarily audible, but it gives us divine confirmation through our thoughts and feelings. As we are told in the Doctrine and Covenants, I will tell you in your mind and in your heart by the Holy Ghost which shall come upon you and which shall dwell in your heart. We must cultivate our sensitivity to that divine voice. We must attune ourselves to the inspiration from God and tune out the scratchy static. We have to work at being tuned in. Most of us need a long time to become tuned in. When I was a newly called General Authority, President Marion G. Romney, who was in his 70s at the time, told us, I know when I am working under the Spirit and when I am not. To be able to recognize when one is being guided by the Spirit is a supernal gift. The still, small voice, though still and small, is very powerful. It whispers through and pierces all things. But like my old crystal set, the message may be there, but we fail to pick it up. Perhaps something in our lives prevents us from hearing the message because we are past feeling. We often put ourselves into spiritual dead spots, places and situations that block out divine messages. <coughs> Some of these dead spots include anger, pornography, transgression, selfishness, and other situations that offend the Spirit. Messages come to us individually and directly from a divine source through our presiding officers in the Church. A little prosperity and peace 
or even a turn slightly for the better can bring us feelings of self-sufficiency. We can feel quickly that we are in control of our lives, that the change for the better is our own doing, not that of a God who communicates to us through the still, small voice of the Spirit. Pride creates a noise within us which makes the quiet voice of the Spirit hard to hear. And soon, in our vanity, we no longer even listen for it. Seek to receive a ratifying witness. Wrestle in mighty prayer, living righteously, and ask for a spiritual confirmation. The beauty of the teachings of the Lord is that they're true and that you can confirm them for yourself. Hone your spiritual susceptibility by being constantly alert to the guidance that will come to the still, small voice of the Spirit. Let your Father in Heaven know of your feelings, your needs, your concerns, your hopes and aspirations. Speak to Him with total confidence, knowing that He will hear and respond. Then patiently go forth in your life, doing those things you know are correct, walking with confidence, born of faith and righteousness, patiently awaiting for the response that will come in the manner and at the time the Lord considers most appropriate. He who sees all things, whose love is endless and who never sleeps, he watches with us. He knows what the sheep need at every moment. By the power of the Holy Ghost, he can tell us and send us to them, and we can, by the priesthood, invite His power to bless them. But His warning to Peter is to us as well. The wolf who would kill the sheep will surely tear at the shepherd. So we must watch over ourselves as well as others. As a shepherd, we will be tempted to go near the edges of sin, but sin in any form offends the Holy Ghost. You must not do anything or go anywhere that offends the Spirit. You cannot afford that risk. Should sin cause you to fail, you would not only be responsible for your own sins, but the sorrow you might have prevented in the lives of others had you been worthy to hear and obey the whisperings of the Spirit. The shepherd must be able to hear the voice of the Spirit and bring down the powers of heaven, or he will fail. We need not live in fear of the future. We have every reason to rejoice and little reason to fear. If we follow the promptings of the Spirit, we will be safe, whatever the future hold. We will be shown what to do. Christ promised that the Father would send another Comforter even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Too many of us are like those whom the Lord said came with a broken heart and a contrite spirit at the time of their conversion, and were baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost, and they knew it not. Imagine that. And they knew it not. It is not unusual for one to have received the gift and not really know it. I fear this supernal gift is being obscured by programs and activities and schedules and so many meetings. There are so many places to go, so many things to do in this noisy world. We can be too busy to pay attention to the promptings of the Spirit. The voice of the Spirit is a still, small voice a voice that is felt rather than heard. It is a spiritual voice that comes into the mind as a thought put into your heart. All over the world, ordinary men, women, and children, not completely aware that they have the gift, bless their families, teach, preach, minister by the Spirit within them. In every language, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost guides or can guide every member of the Church. And everyone is invited to come and repent and be baptized and receive this sacred gift. 
Despite opposition, the church will flourish. And despite persecution, it will grow. Joseph Smith was asked, how does your religion differ from other religions? He replied, all other considerations are contained in the gift of the Holy Ghost. It is awakened with prayer and cultivated by obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. Young people, the voice of the Spirit is felt rather than heard. You can learn when you were very young how the Holy Ghost works. Such comfort is priceless as we journey along the pathway of mortality with its many forks, its many turnings. Rarely is the assurance communicated by a flashing sign or a loud voice. Rather, the language of the Spirit is gentle, quiet, uplifting to the heart, and soothing to the soul. Lest we question the Lord concerning our troubles, let us remember that the wisdom of God may appear as foolishness to man, but the greatest single lesson we can learn in mortality is that when God speaks and a man obeys, that man will always be right. You have your agency. An inspiration does not, perhaps cannot, come unless you ask for it or someone asks for you. No message in the scripture is repeated more often than the invitation, even the command, to pray, to ask. Prayer is so essential a part of revelation that without it, the veil may remain close to you. Learn to pray. Pray often. Pray in your mind, in your heart. Pray on your knees. You must begin where you are. Pray even if you're like the prophet Alma when he was young and wayward, or if you were like Amulek, of the closed mind who knew concerning these things yet would not know. Prayer is your personal key to heaven. The lock is on your side of the veil. The Holy Ghost speaks with a voice that you feel more than you hear. It is described as a still, small voice. And while we speak of listening to the whisperings of the Spirit, most often one describes a spiritual prompting by saying, I had a feeling. The prophet Joseph Smith explained, a person may profit by noticing the first intimations of the spirit of revelation. For instance, when you feel pure intelligence flowing into you, it may give you sudden strokes of ideas so that by noticing it, you may find it fulfilled the same day or soon. Those things that were presented unto your mind by the Spirit of God will come to pass. And thus, by learning the Spirit of God and understanding it, you may grow into the principle of revelation until you become perfect in Christ Jesus. Revelation comes as words we feel more than hear. Nephi told his wayward brothers who were visited by an angel, ye were past feeling that ye could not feel his word. The scriptures are full of such expressions as the veil <clears throat> was taken from our minds and the eyes of our understanding were opened. Or I will tell you in your mind and in your heart. Or I did enlighten thy mind, or speak the thoughts that I shall put into your hearts. There are hundreds of verses which teach of revelation. President Marion G. Romney, quoting the prophet Enos, said, While I was thus struggling in the spirit, behold, the voice of the Lord came into my mind. Enos then related what the Lord put into his mind. This, President Romney said, is a very common means of revelation. It comes into one's mind in words and sentences. With this medium of revelation, I am personally well acquainted. We do not seek for spectacular experiences. 
President Spencer W. Kimball spoke of the many who have no ear for spiritual messages when they come in common dress. Expecting the spectacular, one may not be fully alerted to the constant flow of revealed communication. This voice of the Spirit speaks gently, prompting you what to do or what to say, or it may caution or warn you. Ignore or disobey these promptings, and the Spirit will leave you. It's your choice, your agency. The flow of revelation depends on your faith. Humility is essential to acquiring of spiritual knowledge. To be humble is to be teachable. Humility permits you to be tutored by the Spirit and to be taught from sources inspired by the Lord such as the scriptures. The seeds of personal growth and understanding germinate and flourish in the fertile soil of humility. Their fruit is spiritual knowledge to guide you here and hereafter. A proud individual cannot know the things of the Spirit. Paul taught this truth, saying, The things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Profound spiritual truth cannot simply be poured from one mind and heart to another. It takes faith and diligent effort. Precious truth comes a small piece at a time through faith with great exertion and, at times, wrenching struggles. The Lord intends it be that way so that we can mature in progress. There is one language, however, which is understood by every missionary, the language of the Spirit. It isn't learned by studying textbooks written by men of letters. It isn't acquired by reading or by memorization. The language of the Spirit comes to him who with all his heart and soul strives to know God and keep his commandments. Proficiency in this language breaches barriers, overcomes obstacles. The language of the Spirit rarely comes to us with flashing lights or with loud noise. Rather, it's gentle, it's quiet, comforting to the heart and soothing to the soul. Frequently, our prayers are answered and our questions responded to by silent promptings of the Spirit. We watch, we wait, we listen for that still, small voice. And when it speaks, wise men and wise women obey. We do not delay promptings of the Spirit. Never, never, never postpone a prompting. My dear brothers and sisters, as we journey through mortality, may we learn the language of the Spirit. On this Easter Sunday and every day, may we remember the gentle invitation of our Lord, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him. This is the language of the Spirit. Inspiration and revelation are so common, so widespread, so universal among the leaders and faithful members of this Church that there is a strong spiritual base underlying what is done. This can be found in the gatherings both large and small. Joseph Smith said, No man can receive the Holy Ghost without receiving revelations. The Holy Ghost is a revelator. Latter-day Saints, having received the gift of the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands, are entitled to personal inspiration in the small events of life as well as when they are confronted with the giant Goliaths of life. Personal revelation comes as a testimony of truth and as guidance in spiritual and temporal matters. The members of the Church know that the promptings of the Spirit may be received upon all facets of life, including daily ongoing decisions. How could anyone think of making an important decision such as 
Who is to be my companion? What is my work to be? Where will I live? How will I live without seeking the inspiration of Almighty God? Many faithful Latter-day Saints have been warned by the Spirit to prevent injury or death. And I want to leave you my testimony and express my desire to remain faithful all the days of my life. I pray to the Lord for discernment that I can enjoy the promptings of the Spirit. There's a scripture I, is uh, many scriptures that are very dear to me, but one that uh, has been perhaps as useful to me as any other scripture I can remember is the statement of the Lord that the Spirit enlighteneth every man that cometh into the world. And the Spirit enlighteneth every man through the world that hearkeneth to the voice of the Spirit. And everyone that hearkeneth to the voice of the Spirit cometh unto God, even the Father. And he teaches them of the covenant which he has given us, the covenant of the gospel. Try to live, brethren, so that you can have the Spirit with you in all your activities. Pray for the spirit of discernment that you may hear the promptings of the Spirit and understand them. And then pray for courage to do them, to follow the guidance of the Spirit. It's difficult to separate from the confusion of life that quiet voice of inspiration. Unless you attune yourself, you will miss it. Answers to prayers come in a quiet way. The scriptures describe that voice of inspiration as a still, small voice. If you really try, you can learn to respond to that voice. There are so many of us that go through life and seldom, if ever, hear that quiet voice of inspiration because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The scriptures have many lessons on this. I have come to know that that voice of inspiration comes more as a feeling than as a sound. Young people, stay in condition to respond to inspiration. The Lord has a way of pouring pure intelligence into our minds to prompt us, to guide us, to teach us, to warn us. And you can know the things you need to know instantly. Learn to receive it. Even in our youth activities, there is something to do with inspiration, for they include service to others. And inspiration comes more quickly when we need it to help others than when we're concerned only about ourselves. Put difficult questions in the back of your mind and go about your lives. Ponder and pray quietly, persistently about them. The answer may not come as a lightning bolt. It may come as a little inspiration here and a little there, line upon line, precept upon precept. Some will come from reading the scriptures, some from hearing speakers, and occasionally, when it is important, some will come by very direct and powerful inspiration. The promptings will be clear and unmistakable. You can learn now in your youth to be led by the Holy Ghost. As an apostle, I listen now to the same inspiration coming from the same source in the same way that I listened as a little boy. The signal is much clearer now. 
and on occasions when it is required for his work. For instance, when we are to call members to high position in the stakes, we can ask a question in prayer and receive an immediate, direct revelation in return. No message is repeated more times in Scripture than the simple thought, Ask, and ye shall receive. Prayer can be a very public thing. We teach you often about prayer, about the asking part. Perhaps we have not taught you enough about the receiving part. This is a very private, a very individual thing, one you must learn for yourself. Begin now, and as the years unfold before you, you who are very young, you will be led. That still, small voice will come to you, and then you can come to know, as many, many of us come to know, and as I bear witness, that the Lord lives. I know his voice when he speaks. I know that Jesus is the Christ, that he directs this church, that he is close to it, that he directs his prophets and his leaders and his people and his children 